The Galaxy S24 delivers some of the strongest value of Samsung's latest flagships, offering the same Galaxy AI features as its pricier counterparts. But the real benefit to upgrade is to reap the performance and battery life improvements delivered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 Silicon, assuming that you are able to buy a phone with that chip where you live. The Galaxy S24 is available for $799 US dollar with the base model featuring 128GB of storage. In the US, that's the same price Samsung charged last year for the Galaxy S23, something worth calling out in light of Samsung's $100 price hike for the Galaxy S24 Ultra. There is also a 256GB version of the Galaxy S24 available in the US and UK for $859 US dollar or £859. You will be able to find the Galaxy S24 at Samsung's website as well as the major retailers like Amazon and Best Buy. US phone carriers are now selling the Galaxy S24 too, with many offering Galaxy S24 deals that can help you lower the cost of the phone. I have mentioned the Galaxy S24's larger display which offers a resolution of 2340x1080 resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. But besides the modest increase in size from the 6.1 inch panel on the S23, the biggest addition is a boost to the screen's brightness. Like the rest of the new lineup, the Galaxy S24 promises a maximum brightness of 2600 nits. I have to say our lab testing didn't come close to the theoretical maximum which was probably achieved under very controlled circumstances. Still, the 1416 nits it reaches using a light meter and with HDR enabled is nothing to sneeze it. It improves upon the Galaxy S23's 1340 nit reading and was in line with the iPhone 15's 1400 nit result. I found I had to keep the display brightness slider rather high to see the screen details under less favorable lighting conditions, but at least the S24 has the capability in its toolkit. A trailer for the Ministry of Our Gentlemanly Warfare on YouTube looked pretty dark in some scenes, though I suspect that's a Guy Ritchie problem and not a Samsung one. Streaming under pressure on Netflix produced bright crisp images of the US women's soccer team in action. The Galaxy S24 recreates more colors than the iPhone 15's display does using both the sRGB and DCI-P3 spectrums. Apple's screen is a bit more accurate too with a Delta E rating of 0.18 to the S24's 0.22 with the display in its default vivid mode. In terms of camera hardware, Samsung hasn't really touched a thing for this Galaxy S24 update. The 50MP main camera, 12MP ultrawide shooter and 10MP telephoto lens with 3x optical zoom are exactly what you would find on the Galaxy S23. Even aperture and sensor sizes remain the same. In one sense, that shouldn't matter as the Galaxy S23 was already one of the best camera phones, so you'd imagine that the Galaxy S24 should be just fine on the camera front. And that's before we get to some of the AI enhanced features Samsung has added to the S24 lineup. The trouble is Samsung's competitors have not stood still since last year. Now you can guys see some photo sample of Galaxy S24 and some comparison between S23 and S24 and iPhone 15.
Samsung's Galaxy AI capabilities are also on display when it comes to editing the photos captured by the Galaxy S24. Editing tools essentially take two forms, edit suggestions and generative edits. Edit suggestions take a little bit of digging to find in the gallery app, select the photo you want to tweak or tap the details icon. If Galaxy AI detects that there are improvements to be made, it will list proposed edits that you tap to accept. Common suggestions include removing shadows and adding a background blur. I had mixed results with suggested edits. An image of the bowls in the window of a store had some visible reflections that I wanted to remove and the Galaxy Eye tool did detect them. I just don't think it did a good job of removing them entirely as I still see some glare in the photo. A more promising result was when I had edit suggestions to remaster a nighttime photo of me that looked pretty dark. The suggested edits tool brightened the background, which made the entire picture look more visible even if the lighting seems a bit unnatural to my eye. Generative edits will be familiar to anyone who is used the magic editor feature on the Pixel 8. Here you can move around and resize objects and generative AI is put to work fixing the background so that everything looks natural in the end. Photos altered with generative AI receive a watermark plus a designation in the new images metadata. I had my best luck with generative edits when I used the feature to remove objects. Some plant leaves obscured the front of a pig statue that I photographed so I erased them completely to the point where you wouldn't know they had ever been there in the edited version. I have saved the best Galaxy AI image editing tool for last, the ability to turn videos you have shot with the Galaxy S24 into slow motion videos. This means you don't have to fiddle around with slow motion settings when capturing video, just get your footage and adjust things after fact. Converting a video to slow motion couldn't be easier, you preview the effect by pressing and holding on a video and the gallery app to see what it look like. If you like what you see, tap the edit icon followed by an adjust speed option. You even have tools to set beginning and end points for when the slow motion effects kicks in, which I used for the above video of my daughter practicing her jettles. After using the same system on chip for every Galaxy S23 model, Samsung has gone back to splitting up which phone gets which silicon based on region with the Galaxy S24. Phones sold in North America run on the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset found in all Galaxy S24 Ultra models. Elsewhere, Samsung uses the Exynos 2400 in the Galaxy S24. I can't speak to the performance of the Exynos 2400 as my test unit is a Snapdragon powered model. Traditionally, Exynos powered Galaxy phones have run a step or two behind their Snapdragon based counterparts, but we won't know if that's the case with the Galaxy S24 until my UK based colleagues get their hands on one of these phones. The good news is that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 silicon powering North American Galaxy S24 models produces the best performance we have ever seen from Samsung's entry level flagship. While the Galaxy S24 Ultra outperforms the S24, the Ultra ships with more RAM than the 8GB of memory included with the S24. This model is still out muscles other phones in key benchmarks including the iPhone 15 in some cases. On the Geekbench 6 test, which measures general performance, the Galaxy S24 posted a single and multi-core scores of 2235 and 6922 respectively. Both those numbers topped the OnePlus 12, which runs on the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chipset. More significantly, the Galaxy S24 finished well ahead of the iPhone 15's 6179 result on the multi-core test. The iPhone 15 Pro, with its more powerful a 17 Pro Silicon finished ahead of the Galaxy S24 with respective scores of 2890 and 7194, but that multi-core result is very close, perhaps too close for Apple's comfort. A trend that started with last year's Galaxy S23 continues with the S24 as Samsung's latest flagship sets the pace of graphics performance. In 3D Mark's Wildlife Unlimited benchmark, the Galaxy S24 reached 120.4 frames per second, topping both the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro. 
Only in our real world test does the iPhone continues to soundly thump a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phones like the Galaxy S24. We use Adobe Premiere Rush to transcode video, timing the results. It takes the Galaxy S24 41 seconds to convert a 4K clip to 1080p, a task that iPhone 15 finishes in a little less than 25 seconds. We have been comparing Samsung and Apple flagships for a long time and it isn't often that we can say Samsung's phone keep pace with the iPhone. In the case of the Galaxy S24 too, the statement is true with the Galaxy S24 handling graphics much better than Apple's top handsets. Those test numbers translate to everyday use as jumping between different apps is a breeze on the Galaxy S24. Gaming sessions with PUBG Mobile produce smooth graphics even in the midst of frantic firefights with no dropped frames to slow down the action. Improved overall performance is just part of what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 brings to the table. It also manages power more efficiently as we can see with Galaxy S24's giant leap forward in battery life over the Galaxy S23. We put every phone we review through our proprietary battery test in which we have fully charged device served the wave over cellular unit it runs out of power. The Galaxy S24 held out for 13 hours and 28 minutes, which its display set to the default adaptive refresh rate. That's not only 3.5 hours better than the average smartphone's battery test time, it also tops the 10 hour 27 minute time recorded by the Galaxy S23. Battery size only explains so much of that improvement as the S24's 4000 mAh battery is just a slight bump bigger than the 3900 mAh still powering the S23. That means the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 deserves much of the credit especially when you see similar improvements for the Galaxy S24 models over their predecessors. The Galaxy S24's battery test result can't match the times of the iPhone 15 Pro Max 14 hours and 2 minutes and iPhone 15 Plus 14 hours and 14 minutes. Two, those larger phones can pack in bigger batteries than what the S24 can fit. The Galaxy S24 did outlast Apple's more compact models beating both the iPhone 15 11 hours and 5 minutes and iPhone 15 Pro 10 hours and 53 minutes. Samsung made no change to the charging speed of the Galaxy S24, which remains at 25 watt wired. After 30 minutes of charging, a drained Galaxy S24 reached a 54% charge, which isn't bad too. Now here, close to the OnePlus 12, that phone's 80 watt charging speed means you can get a fully charged device in half an hour. Much of the software discussion surrounding the Galaxy S24 is going to center around those Galaxy AI features, and rightly so. But let's not overlook a big change to Samsung's support policies with the introduction of this phone. Starting with the Galaxy S22, Samsung started offering 4 years of Android updates plus an additional year of security support. The Galaxy S24 expands that to 7 years across the board, meaning your S24 will still be getting Android updates through 2031 if you hold on to the device for that long. Yes, Samsung is following Google's lead after it extended identical support to its Pixel 8 phones. But who cares which phone maker was fast? Extended software support is always welcome, especially at a time when more of us are holding out for longer version phone upgrades. If the Galaxy S24 phone had performed just a shade or two better against the iPhone 15, I would have declared this model as the entry-level flagship phone to get. As it stands, this is still one of the best base model Galaxy S phones I have ever used, delivering a lot of value for US$800. While the AI features are welcome additions, they are only part of what makes the Galaxy S24 so impressive. It's the bigger, brighter skin, longer lasting battery and stellar performance that make the phone device well worth getting with Galaxy AI a nice add-on. Because the cameras haven't changed that much, I don't think anyone with last year's Galaxy flagship needs to concern themselves with upgrading. And perhaps even Galaxy S22 users can get one more year out of their device 
anyone with an older Galaxy flagship should run not work to their nearest retailer to, to grab this new model. Perhaps the most impressive thing about the Galaxy S24 is the serious lack of FOMO you'll have if you opt for this phone over one of the more expensive models. Yes, the Galaxy S24 Ultra has the more impressive camera setup, but with the same Galaxy AI features and battery and performance improvements of its own, the Galaxy S24 is a worthwhile flagship in its own right. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.